I see it. I see it. It's up there. So do you see that? Do you see that? I want to say, oh no, oh no, oh, oh no. Um, um, we're leaving. We're leaving. Um, some developments have happened. Uh, the bushes being overgrown like the, they are. Um, Brock, what did you just see? Uh, I just told my crab to snipe. Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. I'm doing some local adventuring while I'm waiting on Dimples here to go into the shop. And so today I thought this was a great time to kind of explore some of my backyard here in Texas and do something a little bit different. But I'm not by myself in this endeavor. In fact, today we have a guest on the channel that has come a long way to uh, live up to some interesting challenges. Okay, so all the way from Arizona, we have Aussie Van Man. Aussie Van Man, are you ready for a challenge today? I think I am. I think I this should be fun. I think I'll uh, find them before you, so. Huh, okay, I guess I should tell them what exactly we're doing and where we are. Well, as many of you know, I really enjoy geocaching. And so I thought this was a good way to kind of show Brock around parts of Texas that I'm familiar with. In fact, all the places that we're going today are literally in my backyard, places that I go frequently or have throughout my lifetime. And so I thought this was a good way to be like, hey friend, come along, let me take you down some memories and uh, tell you some funny things, but also have a little challenge at the same time. So today we're gonna to be geocaching and uh, showing you guys a few interesting things. And I'll tell you some stories along the way that'll kind of tell you a little bit more about me. I think this is gonna be really fun. But we're starting out here at the art park just outside of St. Joe, Texas, where they have some very interesting things to say the least. Let me show you around and then we'll get to finding this cache. Okay, so as you can see, no trespassing. So even though the art is super cool, we, we can't go over there with it, which is fine, which is fine. But now we're looking for a geocache that according to the clue is where the red and white meet. So is it here or is it over there? Let me pull up my map and check it out. And this will be geocache number one. And then I'll tell you something kind of fun about this place. Um, something I'm noticing is that apparently somebody lost something very sparkly out here wow okay that that's interesting he's trying to get the jump on me because i was seeing the stuff on the ground i had squirrel syndrome and well i, I think that he might be on to something over here let's see he said he didn't find it so let's look around a little bit more we're looking for a little tiny micro cache um hmm let me pull up the map again to see if there's any other clues Okay, we found it. Do you see it? It's sparkly kind of. It's like green. Brock's, Brock's laying his claim on it. Now, I've already found this one once before, so I can't lay claim on it, but Brock can. I'm showing him a few that I have found, but uh, we're also going to find a bunch of them that I haven't found yet, so this could be kind of interesting. And it's been a while since I was last geocaching, so yeah, this is, this is going to be interesting to say the least. But um, one down, let me tell you a weird story. So this place right here, whenever they first started to construct this, it used to just be a regular field. And they started off with these sculptures, which are basically repurposed items. And everybody was like super hype about it. Like, what is that? And then he just kept adding and adding. And at one point, they had a little bit more out here. It's actually kind of like fallen into a bit of disrepair in comparison to what it was. But during the Christmas holiday, they bring hay bales out here and paint them up so they look like snow people. And it's super, super fun. So this is a fun one. I definitely recommend if you're ever in the St. Joe area coming out to this location, you can find it on the geocaching app. And uh, it's pretty spectacular because it's just a little weird, a little different and uh, definitely something super unique. It looks like uh, Brock is on his way back to the van now. So you'll have to go and check out his channel to see what he had to say about his first find here in uh, Texas. Again, one last look. Super, super cool place. 
Now, the best thing about this one is it's also on Atlas Obscura and Roadside America. So it's uh, fun because you can geocache, but it's also fun just because it's a little weird and quirky. But now we're actually going to go into St. Joe. And St. Joe, I have some really fun stories for you guys once we get there. Okay, guys. So for this next one, I'm actually at the Methodist Church here in St. Joe. And I have some fun stories from this one for sure. So whenever I was younger, my grandfather was actually the pastor of this church right here. And I went there through most of my childhood years and we used to play out on these stoops over here after church because it was like a playground for us but over kind of on the side over there you can see there's the bell every single Sunday we would get excited because we get to go outside and ring the bell to let everybody know that you know church was happening but I have a funnier story actually but I need to zoom in just a little bit on on the side over here so do you see that telephone pole that is clearly beside the back of the building so that telephone pole has a super funny story uh, behind it that most people probably don't even know. See, we spent a lot of time up there and that's like the fellowship hall area where all the Sunday school classrooms were. And my grandma would always be up there or my granddad and they lived very close by. So this was also a place that we could just kind of go and play. And uh, I remember there was this one time that my cousin Laura and I, we were outside, we were playing around and we had these rubber bands and we decided we were going to bury them because we thought that they would produce something because we'd heard of a rubber tree. So, okay, cool, sure. That, that sounded like a smart idea as a child. So we planted the rubber bands in the front of the church and there was this bush that started to grow up. And then after the bush had kind of started to grow up more, uh, the city or the phone company or whoever else puts those posts up came out and they installed this huge post. And whenever they did, we thought that the rubber bands created this tree. So we always have called that the rubber band tree, which I think is just super, super funny. But I wanted to share that with you guys. It's just a fun memory that I have. And while we're over here, why not? Also though, you guys know I like good brain wrinkles. This place has been around since 1919. So this church is pretty old and it has a great history. In fact, inside, if you ever have an opportunity to tour a church, um, it's really beautiful inside. They have original stained glass that's been protected. They also have a really nice auditorium in there and then my favorite thing I think they still have it is a listing of all the pastors and you can go in there and you can see that my grandfather was one of the longest standing pastors at this particular church so just a really cool thing sometimes they have garage sales if you happen to come through the area and you see one um, ask if you can come inside and check it out just saying hey, it looks like Brock is getting the scoop on the next one so are you ready to go find our next cash Brock I think so okay where are we going Looks like the closest one is over here. Okay, so we're heading out to find the next cache. Now the nice thing about geocaching, if you haven't seen one of my other geocaching videos, is everything is literally available in app. So you find the cache and then you can hit navigate and it'll give you the closest through path. Now that's not going to tell you turn by turn, so you have to kind of connect the dots when it comes to how you want to get there. But you know, this should be kind of fun. Brock's getting our charted course and uh, then we're off to find more memories and interesting things. Okay, for our next one, it brought us over here to this historical marker. This is the head of Elm Cemetery. This is the oldest of three graveyards here in the St. Joe area. And it was formally called the head of Elm. And then you can see there's just a few small graves over here and uh, it's pretty close to the roadway, but this is where our next geocache is. And on a more personal note, um, I used to ride my bikes all up and down this area. Now, I have family members who still live in this region, so uh, I always was here with my grandparents, with them, and it was super fun because we ruled the town on our little bicycles. And now I struggle on a bicycle. It just shows that uh, sometimes you get out of practice just a little bit. But I think it's, I think it's like right over here, so I'm going to pull up the map and see how many feet I am away. I don't know that this is it, but it sure looks like it's intentionally put here. So I think this is it. And um, I think I found it first on this one. Uh, <laughs> I think you did. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna let Brock get into this one and see what it is. We still have to find a pin because we forgot one. Don't forget a pin, guys. Don't forget a pin. You can do it. You can do it. Time to look. Brock is uh, our go-to man today because I kind of have the heebie-jeebies about snakes. And um, this one I think I would have been okay with, but sometimes it's just better if you have somebody else with you. What do we have? It's a, like a shopping receipt or something. It's super wet because it rained last night. Yeah, that's the only bad thing about some of these. This one we wouldn't be able to sign even if uh, 
even if we did have a pen because it's just too wet right now. Now, the historical marker is actually quite special also. In fact, in Texas, you can find tons of historical markers. There's actually a website where you can find a listing of all of them. But we also mark them pretty well on the sides of the road if you're coming up on one. So always look for brown signs if you're in Texas. You never know what kind of gems that they're going to have when it comes to new brain wrinkles, like this one right here. So that was a fun one, but we have a couple more, and uh, they're in the cemetery. And well... I have family out there, so let's go. As we're driving down to our next one, this is actually Boggus Park. And Boggus Park is where they do the huge, huge 4th of July every year. So they basically set up on the hill over there and they blast off from over here and everyone sits out in the lawn area. And fun fact, whenever my dad worked for the city, he actually worked with some of these things. They've done some improvements since he was here, but um, this has always been a park that I've come to since I was a kiddo. So pretty neat to see all the improvements, especially with this more recent fencing project. But we're off just past this and going toward the cemetery. Okay, according to the map, we're gonna go up one block here up at the cemetery, and it should be up just a little ways to the left here. Okay, it said that we actually passed it, and so we need to go back this way. So I'm thinking maybe that tree. Okay, this one was last found on the 12th of last month. So we're looking to see if we can find it, but at the same time, it says it's pretty difficult. So whenever I was standing like here, it said I was like seven feet away. And it has a little bit of an ebb and flow to it. So you could be seeing seven feet and actually be standing right on top of it because of the geolocate. So I'm thinking it has to be in this plot over here, but it could also be on the corner of this one. And it's a micro, so that's the hardest part. Oh my, this could take us a minute. Okay guys, we kept reading clues and it seemed as though it was in the tree. So do you see that? Do you see that? right there in that little knot hole. That thing is tiny. I found it. I have no idea how I found it. I just kept reading the clues thinking it has to be in a place that you could see it, but I had no idea how that it would be attached. So I kept looking for like a carabiner or something. I didn't see one, so I thought, well, maybe a knot hole because sometimes people shove things in them. Found it, so exciting. The net's coming out, so. Okay, so, so Brock's unscrewing the lid so we can get to the thing. Oh. And then there it is. There's the log. This is a super micro. So it fits right up in that tree. Wow, that one was that one was clever, but also hard. It is definitely secure, Brock said. So uh, that's one that's in the cemetery. We have one more to go. And it's, I think, toward the back of the cemetery. So we're going to go check that one out. And uh, yeah, I, I might even take you guys on a little tour real quick. Do you want to go on a tour? Let's go on a tour. Okay, we're going on a tour real quick before we go find the other one. I'm taking you guys over this direction to something that's really personal to me. Every so often I like to share these little details with you guys. So uh, I thought while we're here, why not pay our respects and visit, you know, some family. So that's what I'm doing. I'm over here trying to get to the gravestone of my grandparents and then my uncle. So I'll show you what that looks like and then we'll head on down to the next one. Now this was my grandfather who actually was a preacher here and then my grandmother. My grandmother was an amazing human being and uh, definitely instilled some good values of just acceptance and caring about others. And then also my uncle Walter is buried here. So let me show you. It's a little overgrown out here because of all the rain, but here they are. And because it needed to be cleaned up, I just kind of brushed it off a little bit, but my grandfather actually served during World War II. So here's his World War II sign. And so, yeah. I know it's a little bit of a stranger thing to bring you guys out to, but you know, my granddad really inspired me when it comes to all of the like military things that I go to. So I thought I would share that with you guys. I remember whenever I was in like elementary school, he came up and talked to my class and told him about his time in the service. And I just was hoping so much that he would bring his military service uniform, but I don't think he had it at the time, but he brought all these photos and talked to the kids about the war, just in a kid friendly way. But I always thought that that was really neat. So I always kind of have carried that with me, which is part of the reason why I do the videos I do. So there's that. But now we're gonna go find another geocache. <sighs> Starting to get warm out here. Definitely muggy because of the rain and uh, we're on a mission. I'm winning. 
technically I already found the other one, so. <laughs> we'll see if he can redeem himself on this one. So for this one, we go to the back side of the cemetery, and then I think it's gonna be on that main road as we come in, but on the back side. Okay, so we made it to the back. According to this, we're 34 feet from where I was sitting to where it is, and we're straight across. So let's go look in. This one's only a two, so it should be easier. I feel as though the only negative to doing geocaching around this time is everything's is fully in bloom. So everything's really bushy. So if they placed it during, oh, I see it, I see it, it's up there. That, that's another one for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was saying if it's more bushy, sometimes if they hide it during the fall, by the time that this kind of weather comes out, it, it makes it much more difficult to find. But this one was easy. This one is super easy. I spotted it from literally like 15 feet away. Rock said there's spiders. The big gross spiders. I'm just gonna chalk this one up till we found it, but there's spiders that are active and I'm not oh, trying to get attacked. But, oh. but but Brock is... Oh, the spiders. There's so many spiders in here. Just, I don't just set it down, Brock. Set it down. Sometimes it's not worth it to get the trinket. Oh. On a positive note, we still found it. So it technically still counts. Um, okay, so... <laughs> He's still talking about the spiders. <laughs> okay, so we logged it. It is officially accounted for. We did not get into it, but that's a bigger one. So it definitely probably has some cool trinkets in there. So if you come out here, check it and see if there are spiders. But um, yeah, it, it is what it is. In the meantime, that's another one for me. Hey, Brock. Hey, Brock. What do you think? Oh, I think you're cheating. No. No, I am not. Okay, this next one is called Among the Cedars, and someone looked for it on the 23rd of last month and said they did not find it. It's a micro. It's only a 1.5 on the difficulty scale. So, uh, Brock, are you up for the challenge? I think if it's 1.5, we should have no problems finding it. We'll cross our fingers that we can find it. But knowing somebody did not find it last, it's also good to note that because if they had a hard time finding it, the wind could have blown it, an animal could have drug it off, or... It could have just been that they weren't looking in the right place, but at least now we know. So if we start thinking that we're crazy because we can't find it, well, we'll know that we're not alone. Okay, we're at a Pioneer Cemetery now. It's just up the road, a short distance from where we just were. And um, as you can see, there's a lot of cemeteries in this tiny little town. Now, according to the map, it should be over in this area. However, people have reported this has been super hard to find. So if we can't find it, it's okay. But I think that if we do find it, it's gonna be in another tree based on the clues. Okay, I found this mailbox and this, surely this wouldn't be it because it's way out here, but it might be because the picture that I just found online shows this grave and this grave, which would make it make sense if it was this. They may have had to replace the box. Brock. Brock. Apparently, if you read some of the things, it's saying the clues are wrong, though. Oh, the clues are wrong. So, maybe it could be the mailbox? Is it it? No. Okay, there's just a random mailbox then. It is not the mailbox, guys. Okay, we're going to keep looking. Okay, we've been out here for a while and have not found it, and we've looked everywhere. Um, it hasn't been found since 2022. It was only found once then. Apparently it's been moved and it's not waterproof. So even if we did find it at this point, we wouldn't be able to sign it. But we've looked up, we've looked down, we've moved things around. The mailbox, I, I still think the mailbox might be it, but there's nothing inside of it. But that doesn't mean anything because if it got wet, somebody might've emptied it out. But we're gonna have to say we didn't find this one. Hmm. Well, at least Brog didn't go ahead. Ha <laughs> I'm still winning. We have a couple more though that are down this road right here as we head toward Cap's Corner. And um, then I have something kind of special planned for Brock in a neighboring town. I'm really excited about. I'm gonna take him to a really delicious place to eat that I've been going to my whole life. Okay, for this next one, it's out here by the St. Joe Rodeo Grounds. And um, we're gonna see if we can find it. I think it's close to one of these trees. Okay, there's something kind of concerning over here. Leaves of three, let it be. Um, I think there's some leaves of three. So we may or may not be able to actually touch this one, but we're gonna try to get to it at least. So let's see if I can find it or Brock can first. Should be interesting. Okay, somewhere in here, but as you can see all of this stuff. So I'm looking around, I'm trying to find it. Brock and I both have decided we will not be touching anything that's over here just because I am highly allergic. And uh, 
yeah, we don't want him to be itchy either. So I'm looking through the tree and um, it's got to be here somewhere. Okay, Brock found I'm it. Try not to touch these limes because they might be poisonous. I, I'm not, I'm not going to touch anything that Brock touches now. But he found it. Good job, Brock. No. Uh, Looks I'm like a little it. clamshell there. One for me. Now, uh, this one is able to be closed, but it's still kind of damp in there so it is what it is now fun story about this place i used to come out here they do an annual rodeo and uh not only did i come out here independently but my friend pam who you guys saw me do my very first adventures with she's actually ridden out here and so i remember that really well especially as i became an older teen coming out here with her and so uh super super fun um now we're gonna have to find brock some sanitizer something to make us not be itchy and uh not gonna be riding my passenger seat anytime soon until i can like spray it down really good because i'm so allergic but uh long story short on this the saint joe riding club rodeo arena actually host their uh their special thing and it celebrates the riders and the professional rodeo like culture and things like that and it's an annual event so if you are coming to st joe check on the schedule of events to see if they're hosting this whenever you're in the area also if you keep going this way there's actually a weird bridge and uh, supposedly it's called the Screamin' Bridge. And I remember whenever I was probably about 18, uh, one of my friends took me out there and was like, oh my gosh, at nighttime, you hear a scream. And you do kind of hear some weird noises, but I think it's because there's some goats that are raised down this road right here and they make weird noises. I don't know. So yeah, there's, there's that weird thing also. Um, excuse me, sir, you, you can't lean on my chair. You touched the green. No, 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 no. Um, Fun story about me, whenever I was young, I used to get it so badly that I could not move. Like I couldn't bend my legs. I got it over my eye one year and I couldn't see. I, I do not mess with the boys in oak or the boys in ivy. And now apparently we're gonna have to put a quarantine chamber over on that side of the van. Ugh. For the time being though, I'm gonna take Brock to one of my favorite restaurants over in Munster, which is a little German community about 10 miles away. Now, I used to go to this restaurant when it was at its old location, and now they have a new location. Uh, same great menu, always good, and uh, they have regular food, like American food, but they also have German food, and it is well worth it, definitely. Also in Munster, they have Oktoberfest and Germanfest every year, another cool set of things to do here in Texas. Okay, guys, we're in Munster, and I think we're going to do a couple things while we're here, but the first thing we're doing, of course, is going to Romer's. So just a little bit further into town we go and um, then we'll be there. And then I have something else up my sleeve for Brock also while we're here. Okay. We're gonna take him to another German spot here. I, I really love this community. They have really tasty stuff. So Romer's and then Fisher's. Looks like we chose to come eat just in time because it just started raining on us a little bit. So we'll be inside where it's safe. <laughs> another successful meal and I am full but now we are going to go over to Fisher's which has a very interesting thing there um so Fisher's is the official meat market of Munster and here you can find local summer sausages and I'm very excited to show these to Brock because we always enjoy a good charcuterie so uh yeah I think that's what we're gonna do I brought Buck here because I thought this would be a good idea, uh, but there's so many options, like so, so many options. Every kind of sausage you can think of, and then all of these cheeses. We may be here for a minute. Okay, so we just left. We got some onion cheese, which I haven't tried, and then some fried pies. 
Fried pie sound good. Super good. So that's gonna probably be our snack later. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna try to do at least one or two more geocaches on the way back to my base camp. So there's tons of them in Munster. In fact, there's this whole two mile like hiking trail that has them all scattered, but it's pretty overgrown and it's two miles and it looks like it's going to rain again. So we're gonna pass on that, but maybe catch a couple of the others and then head back toward my base camp. And um, you know, I just wanted to bring you guys along for this fun adventure today. It's just a little something different and it's a good way to see a new area. So for example, Brock here coming all the way from Arizona, he's gotten to see a few small communities now near me, find some historic markers, read a little bit more about the history and kind of see some interesting things. And you can do this from anywhere. So if you have a smartphone of any kind, go and look up the geocaching app. They have a free version or a paid version. You can start out with the free one and then if you really get into it, then upgrade to the paid one. You don't have to pay to play though. You can do this for free. It just shows you more whenever you do invest. So that's something I'm recommending to you guys. But for now, let's go find a couple more before we uh, head back to base camp. Okay, our first one back, we're at an impasse. So there is a really cute museum right over here. You can't really see it, but this building right here, that's, that's the museum. And they're not open today. However, the cache is placed inside, it looks like, of the property. Neither one of us feels comfortable going onto the property when it's not open. So we may pass this one just because we want to favor on caution. You should always respect places, especially when it could be a place you're not supposed to be. So I think we might pass on this one and go on to the next one because um we're not trying to get into it mm -hmm. with anybody it's, a bit, yeah. it's, it's supposed to be fun not not in badly so i think we're gonna move on to the next one i am gonna look into this one though on a day that the museum is open so i may come back over here on a separate adventure to do that once i find out the hours and take you guys with me who knows we'll find out but um yeah we're gonna we're just gonna keep it going okay when we were in st joe we found one that was called r.i.p St. Joe. Now there's one called R.I.P. Munster and it says we're about 417 feet away. So we're leaving the van, locking it because that's what we do, and uh, heading in this direction. And the sky is looking kind of gnarly, so we may get rained on more. I'm not sure, but for now we're looking for a geocache. This is a really cool cemetery, but it's proving to be difficult because it looks as though it's on this wall somewhere. And there's only one thing up there that we can't get to. And a lot of people are saying they had to bring tools for it and we don't have any tools. So this might be a bust also. Huh, that's not fun. At the same time, we've racked our brains to figure out something else. And this thing up here, this is the only thing that kind of makes sense. We've looked behind the gutters. We've looked under the uh, little box right here. We've looked in the little holes around here. Can't find anything else. Some days, you know, it's just harder than others. Something in here. Brock found something. We don't know what it is. Is it? I really don't know. I can't tell. You need a tool? Maybe. I don't know. I think it's a bolt in there, but I'm not sure. Something metal in that hole, but. Okay, based on the fact that the last one that this guy placed was so difficult, that was the one that was in the tree in that tiny little knot hole. Um, it would make sense if that little knot hole that Brock found is where it is because that thing up top looks a little bit too tall and that would be very unlikely that somebody could find it. But the other one, that's the only hole on the bottom and we don't have any tools. I took everything out of the van that could help us. So uh, on to the next. Made it back to Dimples. Yep, Dimples still needs some work. So just having some fun with Dimples until she goes into the shop, super sad. You know, normally by now I would be off in some other state, but it's actually been kind of nice being here around base camp because there's tons of stuff to do here in Texas that I just haven't done. So I guess I'm gonna start knocking some of that off the list and share it with you guys because there's cool stuff in every single direction within like an hour to two hours. So at least I'll have fun stuff to do. That is if I can get in, wow. Wow, that was a challenge. That was way more of a challenge than should have been. Um, but yeah, these caches today, they have been hard. Okay, on the way out of town, there's one more and it says you'll be at the limit, which made us think that it's at the speed limit sign, 
So across the road we go to the speed limit sign. Somebody had some issues it looks like here, but it's uh, over there, so let's go. We'll be at the limit. So we're looking for a small cache here somewhere, maybe, or would it be over here? Okay, Brock found it and the clue was a little deceiving, but now it is here. I'm not even mad that he got that one because I was looking in the vicinity of it and I'd probably passed it two or three times, uh, but I did not see it. It was kind of tucked in there and he pushed down just a little bit and there it was, it's a magnet. So yay, we got this one so we can put it on our found list. You know, this is a very busy roadway and so there is parking. Um, always park away if you can instead of parking on the major road, especially when you see stuff like this where people have clearly missed just a little bit. <laughs> but um, that was a good find. I, I will give him that. That was a super good find. I like the fact that they use magnets on this one. So that was kind of cool. But back in the van we go and uh, a little closer to base camp. Okay, on the way back to base camp, we're stopping off at another historic cemetery. This one is Perryman. There's actually a historic marker right up front and we're looking for one final geocache and i think we can go in right here oh wow it says here the first marked grave in this burial ground is that of an infant who died in 1862 and then there are several others in here as well including a confederate soldier there was he was actually like looks like captured at lookout mountain tennessee and then also there are a couple of others, a well digger that was killed by the indigenous people at one point. There is a community leader and uh, it looks like a couple of other things too. So let's get going. Okay, it says here that this one is placed near this gravestone. This was actually a person who was buried here after being killed in World War I in France. And they said that it is a small camouflage container. So we're within a few feet here question is where is it again lots of overgrowth lots of rain's been happening so this could be hard to find okay so this is the issue the last time it was found was in march and we've had a lot of rain in texas since so all of this in march would have just been starting to bloom and now it is really overgrown despite the fact that this grounds is amazing it's historic there are tons of really amazing stories in this place that we might have to tackle on another day i want to say Oh no, oh no, um, um, we're leaving, we're leaving. Um, some developments have happened. Uh, the bushes being overgrown, like the, they are. Um, Brock, what did you just see? Uh, I just don't have to grab a snack. Bye bye geocache. This is a good way for us to end this video, I think. If you're not familiar, I am, I am not okay with snakes. And um, you know, poking around sometimes, looking for geocache can get dangerous as was just proven by Brock. Are you okay? Yeah, he's, he's coiled up and he's looking right at me. And I almost went down and grabbed him. I peeled the, peeled the brush back and he was just sitting there. What kind of snake was he? I'm not too sure. I have to look up Texas snakes, but he was sandy colored with some like camo patterns on him. It's usually not good. So we're gonna get out of here. And um, I just wanted to bring you guys along for this adventure today. As you can see, uh, we had a good time and, until we didn't but I've enjoyed sharing some of my hometown area with you guys. And um, now it's time for us to hit the road and uh, get away from the sneaky snake because uh-uh, no sir, this is why I don't geocache alone, especially when it's green and lush like this. <laughs> Winter time, that's one thing, but um, this time of year. <sighs> Surprise. Yeah. So uh, I'll see you guys next time, bye. Update, Brock is now looking at snake photos. It appears to either be a copperhead or a prairie rattlesnake. Neither of which are good. So, um, yeah, good times. And then he showed me a picture. No, just 